Hey, what's up, y'all? It's another episode of Notable Prisons and the Inmates that Occupy Them. I need y'all to do something, though. Get your lighters ready. So this is part of my serial killer episode. And today we are talking about Larry Dean Bright, also known as the Bone Crusher, who was a uh, serial killer responsible for the death of at least eight women between the ages of 30 and 41 in Illinois. The murders occurred between July 2003-ish and October 2004 in Tazewell County, Illinois. His nickname derives from his per- per- purported propensity for burning his victims' bodies before crushing their bone fragments with a hammer. After confessing to his crimes in May 05, Bright was convicted of eight counts of murder and sentenced to eight light sentences without the possibility of parole. Man, not long after 2000, Bright began to spend a great deal of free time around, like, you know, S workers and taking particular interest in African American women. Between March of 01 and October of 04, the bodies of six women were found in rural areas around the Illinois counties, um, and four other women were reported missing from the area. In 04, the Perio County, the Perio City, Police Department formed a task force of 13 police officers with input from neighboring law enforcement agencies to investigate the cases. Bright came under suspicion that December, after police arrested 35-year-old sex worker uh, Vicki Balmer for theft while residing in county jail, the woman offered to help investigators in exchange for a plea bargain. Bomber claimed that in July, a client named Larry Bright lured her into the uh, outbuilding of his mother's home where he lived after sharing alcohol and drugs. Bright attacked her and attempted to R-word her at knife point, but Bomber managed to escape after a struggle. Since the alleged incident occurred five months prior to her arrest, authorities questioned the legitimacy of her statement. Bomber claimed that she was afraid to report the incident earlier as she had failed to appear in court on other charges which officers later confirmed when checking her criminal history. While the investigation, the suspect investigators became aware of at least six similar cases during which Bright had displayed aggressive behavior, particularly towards African-American sex workers. Bright was detained and interrogated in late December, whereupon he was told that he could be charged with illegal deprivation of a liberty under aggravated circumstances. He refused to cooperate with officers and denied the charges and was released shortly after due to lack of evidence. The district attorney, however, was granted a search warrant in January 20th, 05, allowing investigators to search Bright's property for potential evidence. During this search, the police attention was drawn to several plots of excavated land, which Bright's mother claimed originated when she and her son removed several raspberry bushes. Yes. So I guess you need a six foot deep hole by five foot eight for a raspberry bush. When digging through the area, however, officers found ashes and many small bone fragments. Based on this evidence, Bright was temporarily detained in Tazewell County Jail. After forensic examination determined that the bone fragments were human origin, Bright was charged with murder, and the prosecutors ordered his house excavated. Not long after, Bright confessed to the murder of eight women. Bright's first known victim was a 30-year-old Sabrina Payne, whom he had picked up on the uh, outskirts of Illinois. He offered her money in exchange for SCX. He wasn't a player. He was was one of those people, yeah, and drove Payne to his house. During his interrogation, Bright claimed that he had no no memory of how he killed Payne as he was intoxicated at that time. But the autopsy implied strangulation. After the murder, he loaded the body in, in his SUV and took it to a cornfield outside of Tremont, where it was discovered on July 27th, 2003. And then in two, August of 2004, he met a 33-year-old S worker, Laura, and offered her money in exchange for uh, S services. He strangled Lola during intercourse and burned her body in the backyard to dispose of any evidence. In January 2005, he identified her from a photograph presented to him. Like, how do you 
burn a complete person in your backyard and like no one is like alerted. I'm sure it doesn't smell like wood or chicken or nothing. Like I'm sure it has like a crazy like, I don't know. That's crazy, right? In late September, Bright met with the 40 year old S worker Linda K. Neal in the parking lot of a furniture store. He offered her drugs in exchange for SEX, to which Neil agreed. As with previous victims, Bright took her to his house where they took crack cocaine before engaging in intercourse. After Neil fell asleep, he strangled her because his mother was at home. He didn't dispose of the body away from the house. Bright took the body to a, uh, to a, where a, a, a roadside in Tazewell County, leaving traces from a shoelace on her neck. In conducting the autopsy, the coroner found um, biological evidence from a male perpetrator in the victim's body. After Bright's arrest, several cigarette butts were taken from his home and sent for DNA profiling where it was found to match the DNA of Neil's killer. Now, so as part of a plea bargain and full confession, he was spared the death penalty. On May 30th, 2006, he was sentenced to eight terms of life in prison without the possibility of parole. During his court hearings, Bright confessed to additional murders in Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Washington, and even Arizona, but later retracted his statements. He also expressed that he contemplated suicide. I mean, what's he waiting for? On multiple occasions, but that never followed through due to his religious beliefs. Bright also admitted that he intended to attack the arresting officers with knives so they would shoot him, but he refrained because his mother was at the scene. While some investigators proposed racism as a primary motive for Bright's killings, he denied this, instead giving several explanations for his motives. At first, he claimed that he developed a misogynistic view of African-American women after contracting a, a HIV AIDS from a sex worker. When he tested negative for the virus, this explanation was questioned. Later, Bright claimed that as a 19-year-old boy serving a prison sentence, he was sexually abused on multiple occasions by an African-American prisoners and developed an urge to punish black men for causing him harm. As he was not sexually attracted to men, in later years, he claimed that his hatred shifted to focus on the female sex workers. You know, dude, scummy. You dig? Very scummy. Very, very, very scummy. And that right there, people, is the story of the Bone Crusher. Let me know what you think. Tell me something in the comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.